Where is that coming from? Oh, yes, it's the oh, feedback. Oh, it's the same thing. Keep, so the piece is kind of a base function. Just, just keep how the sound is going to be done. Until and also how the diagnosis is done. When you play the video, you have to yeah, unmute it. Yeah, because I'm not going to bother. Okay. Like, there's audio. So what in the program, what I have, we have to do that. Otherwise, just... Okay. We definitely... It's a very short one. So first of all, welcome by person I'm speaking right now. The second we the short lectures from person who invite when I invited. And then uh, there'll be a presentation from Vikram and also a recitation of poems and translation in English. So those are the items we have added. All of them are very short, short, short. So it's not too, it take too long. And there's also Dances. So we don't know who is going to dance, but I have a confirmation. So that means you know, kind of a surprise for you. So the dance song, I can say that CDC Patan Jita Kutu Kutu Nagala. The transition for this is the breathing is kind of making you tickly. Mm -hmm. But what kind of breathing is that? <laughs> you can figure out when they are going to dance. They are still on the <laughs> neck. So whether they will tickle you or maybe they themselves get the tickle, that's why they are saying that. So that's how it is. <laughs> but anyway, and then also uh, another Korea dance. So Korea dance will be the next one of the first one, which one is going to come first. And then there's a special announcement from my side, and that I will not tell you right now. <laughs> but I will tell you that, that when it comes. And then after that, there's a closing. So the closing will be during the you know speech time, or maybe I have just only the few people's name there, but. If you are going to speak up, please register. Everyone is welcome to say something, how you feel about this program, how you feel about all these things going on. So in the background of the information, before we move on further, I would like to have, take a look at the paper I gave it to you and also in, uh, in the uh, text message. So please, Taya is going to play that song and they, along with all of you, please sing. <laughs> Let me pull up again. This is called the World Newa Day song just released today in Nepal, and then we are releasing that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, song? Yeah, one moment. Let's let the ad play. <laughs> in that too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is song? Yeah, yeah. one moment. Let's let the ad play. <laughs> In that oh. yeah, moment, the ad play. In that oh. yeah, moment, the ad play. In that Oh, 
So when it was established in 2011, the next one supposed to be in 2014. And at that time, what happened actually, there was a political uprising in Nepal and it was unstable. So there was no way to bring all the people from Nepal or the other places of the world to bring over in Kathmandu and there was no way to make a second convention. Mm -hmm. And then soon after that, in 2015, they decided to do it in 2015, but somehow in March or April, right, we got a big earthquake. So that's kind of a put back, not able to do that on 2015. And then we all together decided, okay, we're not going to do it in Nepal. So let's do it in America. So we brought in the second convention, the first convention in uh, London and second convention in Baltimore. So that day was uh, March 30th, Saturday. So, Saturday. so that's why we are kind of declaring that let's do that. Last Saturday of March is every year. So we'll, we'll look nice that the here. So now this is the seventh one. From 2016, actually from 2016, we declared that in you know, 2018. So we have a World War Convention in Kathmandu, the Global New Convention in Kathmandu on 2018, the same day today, like Saturday. So that was the first announcement for the World New Day celebration, and it happened. 
So 2018, 19, and 20, and 21. So 20 and 21 and 20, it didn't happen because of the pandemic. So we were kind of doing everything in the June. And then 2022, we did it here. 2023, we did it here. So here you are again. <laughs> so this is the background of why we are celebrating the World Wars today. The reason why it was already declared worldwide. So today, our program is also listed in a newspaper everywhere. And I also wrote an article on why we are doing this or what is this all about in Nepali, in English, and also in the Parvasa. It's all languages. So that means, first of all, welcome, Laskus, and Swagatam for this program. So definitely, the reason why we are here is to promote the Nepal culture, to promote the language, promote the heritage, promote everything what is belongs to the Nepal community. So when I say that, it might be kind of like a you know, communalism. So it's, it's not a because we need to be. So we were already warned by the United Nations, the uh, UNESCO. This ethnicity, this language is going to die in the next 50 years. We are already warned. So do something, do something otherwise. So when I was working with one of the professor from Florida University at the time, he kind of predicted in 1986, I was still in Nepal, I came here in 88. So if the train goes like this in 1980, what he said in year 100, your language will become like a Sanskrit, there will be no speakers. What to do? So 1986 until now, how many years gone? And then we got a census report that in 2011, census report, what we said that the 38% of Nepal people, they don't speak language at all. Is there something sad? The reason why? <laughs> so that's what we don't see the importance of speaking the own language. So I might kind of like a you know too much advocacy on this thing because I'm worried about my generation will be no more speaking the same language. So I'm worried about that. That's why I'm kind of trying to do it. So we established the World New World Nation in 2011 to spread out all the reason of why it should be spread out everywhere in the We're not only in the US but US. So the next item and First of all, I have the reason I is problem store in here or not? No, I, so not yet. I have put together first of all because Prozo is supposed to be here and he could not make it because he already had a plan when I was you know thinking about this plan. So that's why I couldn't do it. And I was hoping that he's gonna join from June, but somehow probably he's not available, but he's on a class right now. Mm -hmm. So in representing for the Titimanur uh, Mahabhyara and also representing the Prozor, I'm requesting Kaya, Mrs. Prozor, who probably you know, gives you words from your perspective that when you enter into our new community from the beginning and also your experience right now, just say a few words, whatever your time is, two minutes, three minutes, maximum five minutes, less than, you know, minimum two minutes. So that means, please welcome here. Yeah. 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 There is no time boundary, okay? No. okay. okay. Only two minutes. <laughs> okay, i take my time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, very try. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, so Daya asked me to speak a little bit on my experience of being married to a Newa Vajrayana Buddhist priest, so I can say a few words about it. Um, so, I was personally raised in a household of Tibetan Buddhist practitioners from the Nina tradition and Vajrayana, and um, but my Tsawai Lama always said that um, our tradition is Rime, which is the non sectarian. So, um, Coming from a tradition of like many hours of sitting, sitting, and more sitting, when I first saw Prajwal for, um, teach on the Vajra dance, I was like, wow, yes, of course this is, this makes sense. This is the deities move, we need to move, the deities are dancing, and it was so inspiring. And to witness the beautiful, elaborate, colorful rituals that are performed in this temple and to see Prajwal travel and perform these rituals in people's homes. It's so inspiring on such a, on such a deep level. And 
It makes so much sense to have rituals of purification for major life events, to clear obstacles and make way for auspicious circumstances to arise when beginning the new year, when having a birthday, for pregnancy at different stages, for birth, for old age, and for death. Because as we know, difficulties can easily arise. And so to feel protected and empowered, it's so healing and supportive for mental and physical health. Uh, so this is a time when a lot of traditions of Buddhism have the opportunity to come together and to learn from one another. Buddha taught 2,500 years ago, maybe more. And it's amazing that we live in a time now where we can share wisdom with each other from many different cultures and many layers of wisdom that open our hearts and learn about ourselves in a deep and meaningful way. And it's such an honor to be part of a family and community that connected with this beautiful Newar Buddhist Bandriana Temple of artists and scholars and linguists and journalists and chefs and physicists. I say physicists twice because there's so many <laughs> here who we'll, have uh, opened their hearts and kitchens to me. <laughs> I'm so grateful to know you all. I'm just so grateful to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Can you repeat that the first sentence of what the speech is there? Because they are like to hear again. Yeah. Because you want to see how you do it. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's more interesting to see how you say all these things. Now. Okay, why? Okay. This is the uniqueness of the English community, coming to our family, coming to the culture. So that's why we all are. So respecting the work culture, what we have, what we want, what we do, so they are not only just the Jawa people here, but also the non Jawa people also here. So I would say, I think that you guys are enjoying the day, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Is it a good time? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit late, our planning to start at 5 30, but somehow, you know, we always have the traffic problems. Nepali time. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we say that Nepali time? No. no. Oh. Oh, no, no, oh, no. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> I have another, another speaker so, who is going to talk about something totally different than what does he say. This is, I would like to welcome Dr. Robin Man Satya. So, he's going to talk about some kind of journalism because journalism is also important. What we are doing right now, people in the watching, so in the newspaper, everything is so through the journalism, right? So, that means. He's going to talk about some journalistic, journalistic aspect of the you whole know, world. Okay, go ahead, please. Welcome. Welcome. So thank you. Good gathering with certain nice people. I know where to speak. Uh, I'll take not more than two, three minutes to we'll speak about uh, what we're doing in. Um, Mahabhyala, and like that, I said, uh, we'll speak something about journalism. Mm -hmm. So, we're celebrating seven World Neva Day at the only Neva Buddhist temple in America and in, in the world, in the West. We're lucky and honored to have been celebrating the World Neva Day at an auspicious and Sacred temple. As I said, uh, well, the seventh World Neva Day is being celebrated in about 20 countries. Uh, but uh, celebrating in a, in a place, a sacred place like this, so Neva Buddhist temple is uh, something special, you know. Mm -hmm. So, why are we celebrating the World Neva Day? Because we have to raise and increase the newer, newer of our awareness and you know, to unify the newer people living all across the world 
and two. The celebration of the world Yawa day should, should focus on the author to demand more rights and opportunities for, for the indigenous people because we know what are also the indigenous people like uh, the Gurungs, Kalus, Tamans, Esterfas, Mugas, Rai, and Rindu. Mm -hmm. uh, Nitya Mangal Mahadhyaya was established in 2009 in Portland with the full financial support from Helen Apple. Helen Apple and Pradul Gurdjir, Pradul of the Badrasare, are the co-founders of Nitya Mangal Mahadhyaya. When it comes to the promotion and preservation of Newar Buddhism and Newar culture, Newar tradition, the role and significance of Nitya Mangal Mahadhyaya is unparalleled comparing to other organizations in the West. You know, it has been promoting Newar Buddhism and Newar culture with the performance, with the schooling, with the teaching of Sarai dance and with the celebration of different new art festivals and with the celebration of different uh, life cycles, rituals in the new art Buddhist, uh, new art Buddhism. So, this is what I say about the, the, me being a journalist myself. So, when did the uh, new art journalism? Start. The Newark journalism started uh, in 1938 when uh, the first Newark journalist, Dharma Dharma he launched a Newark magazine, a magazine in Nepal Bhasa. It, it was called the Buddha Dharma for Nepal Bhasa, and he launched it in 1938 in Calcutta. After that, uh, why it was to be learned from India, Calcutta, because there was no suitable political atmosphere in Nepal at that time. Uh, that's why he had to do it. Later, when there was political change in 1950, everything changed and uh, journalism began to flourish in, in, inside Nepal. <laughs> and uh, we'll be talking about in, including inclusive journalism. Inclusive journalism means uh, when you play a web, you print and publish material in the main official language as well as in the uh, minority languages. So we have been doing uh, this. Uh, the first uh, inclusive uh, magazine, uh, magazine in Nepal was published uh, by Satyamohan Joshi, uh, who is the patron of all the organizations. The magazine Kalatar was the first uh, published in 1953 in Nepal. And uh, talking about inclusive journalism, uh, inclusive journalism has been uh, done in Portland also. In Portland, the Nepali community has published many magazines that came out together in English, Nepali, and Nepal also under the initiative of uh, Dai Dai. He published uh, many uh, magazines uh, like Neva Began, Namaste, and Lakut, uh, and so on. I was in Soviet Union uh, for about 10 years, and when we, we were students, we students uh, published uh, many magazines, uh, even during our stay in that country in Nepali and in Nepal, Nepal Master. So I think I will not take a long time to, uh, there, there are much more interesting things to come. Thank you very much for Thank you, uh, Dr. Ravi Man. So the, this is how, you know, everywhere, every field is kind of covered by the recent research of my area. So if you let me speak if I were linguistic, I can talk two hours. <laughs> no problem. So now the next uh, person who wanted to speak something about 
what the memo is all about, or maybe what the kind of information is, how he got involved. And let me invoke the thing by Adam. Okay. So please, Adam has something to say. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, I was asked to give a lecture on Nawa heritage, which is something I'm fairly unqualified to speak about. But, um, barely know what a lecture is, and the things I learned about Nawa heritage and intend to relate is pretty minimal. Um, uh, but since I study the practices give rise to the Nawa culture, um, I can share a little bit of my experience surrounding that. Uh, the Kathmandu Valley, from its humble origin story of the lotus, can be seen as representing the awakened spirit. And the lake can be seen as representing the emptiness, the Naga is as representing a form of, of rebirth. The awakening is the birth, the emptiness is the life, the rebirth is this personality or identity. Consciousness or experience, what we experience arises from this awakening, finds a way to root into this emptiness and develops a personality through this rebirth. The Nawa people, through culture and ritual, have learned to embrace these three things awakening, emptiness, and rebirth, using it to find. Oneness. No matter the kind of Dharma practice in Kathmandu, the consciousness comes there to become part of one thing, to embrace and become part of the, com the complexity of life. The rituals, the dances, the people, these are all reflections and expressions of the unification of this emptiness of wisdom and the waking of method, being the path to this wisdom. Nawa people, being the indigenous people of that former lake, have had many instances where other cultures of all kinds have come to attempt to claim deeper oneness than the indigenous by separating or manipulating the indigenous culture from their own practices. Traveling there recently, I could see some of the results of this many beautiful and diverse practices, from the personal to the vihara and, and temple and even monastic. Diverse peoples from many practices and backgrounds getting along in complex ways in such a sometimes very chaotic environment, finding so much heat. I liken it to almost the opposite of here, where people struggle to get along sometimes with so little chaos. But also the damage done, wilderness diminished, air quality low, temples sometimes cut in half by other, another group for a claim. People understanding the desires of what they are practicing, but only time to tell how much the desire leads or does not lead to manifesting their new vacation desire. One gentleman I recently talked to here at this temple considered Kathmandu destroyed, something that has been talked of, but can certainly understand from a certain perspective. And I wouldn't be surprised if some of you migrated here for a similar reason. But so here in this temple, in this event of this evening that represents your indigeneity of that valley, but in a place where none of us are really indigenous, what does that mean to be some of the first indigenous people of Kathmandu to come here, the chance to not be indigenous in search of finding a new wonder? This is a journey my family did a few generations ago as well. So certainly I can find some oneness in that. These are questions we you can answer, obviously, as this will obviously, this will be different for everyone, I'm sure. Talking with people here, this desire to be one with what you do, obviously, is still very much alive. And so much respect for that, and ultimately why I commit my time here for to these practices and helping set up and clean up for these events. And I'm here talking now. It's almost like the oneness is giving us an opportunity to become one with each other. No longer are we that indigenous group of this place and that other place, but instead we're becoming this indigenous people of this present moment, all born together to work together. Transcending place and time, we learn and we harmonize, and when we don't, and things fall apart. The heritage of the Miwa practices, though, obviously are very deep and ancient, and hold the continuity of your history and your rituals, in your stories and your bodies. What that means to hold and share, I can only imagine, as the oldest linear practices I can attest to, similar to Shantideva, even sleeping in food. How important is it, though, that to both of you and everyone else that you hold on to these meanings, these practices and pujas, the Nawa culture have developed and use them to transform what you come across into this wonder, instead of losing it and embracing the duality? 
this will ultimately, ultimately be the test of any culture, not culture, not just this one. But also to grow these practices, to become larger, to many allow people to find new practices that lead to similarly new expressions of oneness beyond what an individual can accomplish or a group or any kind of identity, to become selfless and unattached to identities so that your identity cannot be formed. Being here as some of the first of your culture to migrate is almost like forming a new indigenous white culture, you and I, and many others who have lost or are in danger of being separated from the system we depend on or have otherwise given up life. And now have become so much toxic to us. Can we be reborn and find a new way to become one again? To become wholesome and nourishing so that we can find and help others discover these ways to find new systems, new help? No doubt you understand deeply the threat of making this a reality, something I humbly only begin to understand. It's fantastic to see this event happen certainly as a testament to celebration, the making of one that's a reality. To give birth to these threads, Guruji and Helen taking the time and can study. The devotion to build this temple and play such a role in helping you all stay connected to your culture, while these transformations are taking place and helping us confuse Western people additionally. None of this are an easy path, certainly. Daya was from, from what I understand, one of the earlier people here to migrate from the and obviously works hard to keep the culture going as best as able. You know, hence, organizing this, this event, as well as taking the time to try to teach us in the fall doctrine. And seeing all of you on Puja days, weaving those threads, helping in all the ways is honestly one of the more beautiful things I ever expect to see. It's like watching a thousand petal lotus bloom every single time. May it root us all in the emptiness so we may again become a complete full of life. Goodbye. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. So your feedback is very, very important for me to listen to what you feel about it. Uh, you know, in histories, what we find is completely sometimes not kind of acceptable because most of the histories are kind of like a many places. Hey, you write this, you don't like this. Hey, you write this, you don't like this. So that kind of a history is available in the book. Mm -hmm. And then the same history is also taught in school. So those history books are studied by the students and then what they have you know in their mind is something like that. So it's there in the history. Why do you say that? So that's kind of a things happening over here. So that's why I'm not saying like a you know expense, but some kind of reality says. So now uh thank you Adam for your you know, comment on that. So next is going to the food area. So when I say the food area, New York also is so much rich in the food also. So today we are going to have a feast. Why? Where I was telling everybody when I send me the text message, what happened? So don't bring this text on the thing because we need to focus on the culturally specific, culturally specific, traditional, and also health and nutritional value of the boy. So that's why, you know, from first course of meal, second course of meal, third course of meal, fourth course of meal, and the very last in the Isla, Isla in the wine. So the reason why we have the Baji, the little rice, and, and the Isla. All different kinds of food is consumed by us, which is very good for the health and also for the nutritional value. So we don't need to go to you know, doctor to <laughs> get sick if we are trying to put lunch together like the one the food value. So I would like to welcome <laughs> Chef Vikram to yeah. speak about the, the tradition of air in our <laughs> Yeah. Do you like them now? Or do you want to give an intro? Okay. So instead of looking at him, maybe you may want to start. So yeah, I will, first I will introduce, and then uh, we'll, we'll I will show you my presentation. So it's very important to understand them. Um, got it? Yeah, yeah, there you go. Looks good. Oh, a jacket. All right, that's fine. <laughs> Uh, you may know that we are, um, we do not do it. Uh, this morning, um, in your paper, we are heading into the Uh, so I'm gonna. My name is Vikram, you guys probably know, those who don't know me. Uh, my uh, background is, I'm culinary educator, more than chef. Yeah. Chef is given the title for me, but I'm not a real chef. 
because deaf is different than culinary educator. Uh, the, but we got title chef because we teach chefs. Mm -hmm. But the more I got into it, I became a chef. And then when I was young, I studied culinary arts. I graduated from culinary arts. I was the probably first graduate of culinary arts in Nepali people. Mm -hmm. This is in 1996. It's a long time ago when when I told people like I graduated from culinary arts and people said, what? Yeah. <laughs> what is that? And the boss said, hey, no idea what these culinary arts mean. And when I did just like this kind of program for the elite family only, and I did a presentation, okay, this is a culinary art. It's blown away. You know, I started it in my Mar Mar Anyway, so, and I explained about the bay that time because this is very interesting. When I came to America, I didn't know nothing about it, about a food, because I know about a food, but I don't know how to cook, prepare properly. So I used to call my mother, spend $100. A minute cost $10 to call Nepal back then. A trunco, thanks to my wife, you know. <laughs> thanks, sorry, man. So, yeah. so it's my wife, Amelia, man. So, and that time, I mean, it was a sin, you know, and I, I studied, I learned, and I learned. And I was like, you have, I have to read a lot of recipe books. And then I learned so much, more I learned, less I knew. But I understood one thing when I went to culinary school, like, oh my God, our culture is so rich. So many things we have in our culture, it's, it's documented in this book, what I was in textbook. Our textbooks are that big, you know. I I had to go through sanitation, I had to go through hygiene, nutrition, all this study. And everything uh, lines up with our system, which is we have for thousands of years, and we are losing it. And when I went, that's when I decided, when I went back to Nepal and said, we need to preserve including sanitation, washing our hands, washing our feet, sitting down, how we prepare our floors, why we don't allow people in our kitchen, why, who is allowed it? It's nothing to do with a lot of stuff what we thought, oh, you don't do that, you don't do that, because nobody's able to explain why, mm -hmm. right? And only thing is, I in my book, I've written this one thing called Putukha. Putukha means, do you remember when we were growing up? It said, oh, Putukha way. Means, Putukha means the ghost will appear at nighttime in the kitchen. That, you know, what that mean is a bacteria. Because rats, the mice, gets into the food, and that's what they're talking about today. All these little things like croakers and stuff like that, the bugs carry all these different kind of bacteria, right? Bring into the kitchen. So that's what we call punne, niche, niche means the early morning, getting up and bringing up a, 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 a water, vessel of water. Niche means, right? You purify your body first and then grab the water vessel and a punne. You take it to your kitchen. And your kitchen is white, and kitchen is such an important part of our life. And kitchen is never was in a bottom floor, it's always on the top floor. Because there's a rhythm. Smoke. The smoke rise, if it is in the bottom, it gets stinky upstairs, and also it is not healthy for your body. These are all in memory culture has practiced. And the architect has designed it for thousands of years ago, and we are losing it. And today, we put a kitchen on the bottom, and we go sleep on top floor, <laughs> right? It's the reverse, right? So there's so many things we're losing culturally, and I'm an advocate of that. That's why I wrote a book about it, you know? And I've been advocating about our to preserve our cultural heritage, you know? So we have knowledge. Our Newari people have, people come from all over, not just people in the valley came 
2,000 years ago or 3,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, who knows when that was established. But people definitely evidence there are people came from China, Tibet, Burma, India, all came together and became a melting pot and created our new culture called the Wang culture. It's not that did not happen in one day, it did not happen in two days. It happened in century years old history, right? If you look put together, there are Portuguese influence. There is, a, you believe or not, a French influence. There is, we call Sabo, Sabo, just simple in our language. That's a French language. We didn't have Sabo, right? There's so many words. It's if we talk about it, it's all came from in a Nepali language. So many Nepali people uh, say that's Nepali, but it is not. It's a Newari. Or Newari language, there are so many adopted, like, is it the linguistic genius? And they like, thank you uh, for teaching me so much stuff. And uh, so that's what this is, right? And during my research, I found so many things about it. But bottom line is, I'm trying to tell today, talk about a little bit, way, Newari way. Newari way, it's very, very uh, interesting and very elaborate, and the way it's designed was very particularly, you know, how you sort of, you know, like four courts we call, you know, French acts. It, that was a very new thing. If you look, look, look at the French, it wasn't until French Revolution, restaurants going, in, going out and enjoying the food. And the chefs came out and then started preparing the royal cuisine into the public. That's how the whole fine dining started mm -hmm. in France. Yeah, so this is my job. That's what we studied. And that's what I'm saying. But in our culture, they have been doing since 13th century, 10th century, or even longer. Right? So those poor meals out there, French were learning from us, actually. We are not learning from them. <laughs> you know, that's what we need to understand. And to understand that, we need to speak our language. That is the very important part. If you forget, you don't know how to do it. Tapu, nipu, what's up? Those words are so important. And I was talking to my wife, and if you grab it, that word, tokutati, tokuti. That those words are so important when you put, put a put both in that. They don't have a spoon. They use the, their hand. Right? So you have to have that language uh, to communicate how the chefs and the, uh, the people who are presenting foods have to uh, know exact uh, how much. Does that make sense? So if you look at it, we call a portion, right? portion size. How much portion size? That portion size is what is important for our body. So you are not overeating like buffet, right? <laughs> so this is a buffet in, in a different way. It's a systematic buffet, right? But in a coarse way. So, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to start talking uh, on a, this presentation now. I'll take a very short period of time because if, like Barry said, if I talk about a culinary field, I can do two hours, three hours. I, I just talk. You know? I mean, I didn't know what's happening. I lost <laughs> uh, So, uh, my study, I studied I international culture and didn't. I traveled around the world because I was so fascinated by food. And I traveled east to west Nepal, south to north. I traveled all over Nepal with studying different culture and what influence in Kathmandu. So, that's why it is very fascinating, okay? So anyway, here we go. Uh, if you guys don't mind turning around and then look at that rather than my face, I'm, you know, <laughs> there are more pretty people out there. So anyway, uh, Newa culture here it is. I call it a mystic, uh, mystic cuisine of the world. Okay, um, Newa knowledge, skill, and practice have been transformed from generation to generation. That's what I was talking about. It mother to daughter, daughter to daughter. So, and not only that, in the Newa culture, we have a man who cooks too for the bread, both, or for elaborate uh, preparations. Classical example, and it's one of the greatest influence in my life while I was going to the school, is Bernadine's mom, okay? 
Bernard, Bernadette herself too was a big influence. I Minu, mean, thank you so much. You guys were a big part of my life, you know. And uh, his, her dad was the greatest chef, right? And so that's why and it's not just a woman whose job is this in Nepal. It's a man to do too, okay? So that's how we bring the sense of community. We divide all the uh, equal, uh, you know, work. So let's put a second one. This is called, I call Newabwe, right? The title. And <laughs> wow, that's thing. Well, it make it <laughs> but, um, yeah, there we go. All right, thank you. What is Neopo? The Bue. The Bode, Bue is a, the word is a Sanskrit word, Bodha. Okay? So in India, it's been there for a long, long time. It's a meal. It's a prepared meal. So basically it is. But the, in Nepal, we need to the base is in a grand meal, right? It's an elaborate meal. So especially those Bodes are prepared during celebration, festivals, uh, any kind of special occasions, right? It's significant in Nevada culture that hospitality is a very important part, that we present the hospitality by feeding people. And we have a saying, Nevada people of in Nevada, right? Oh, yeah. So that's what that is. It's just, it is very important for in our culture to present uh, giving a delicious food. I, and I wrote an article called, I need to feed you, right? <laughs> and then everybody started calling me at home by cell phone. <laughs> Custom and culture is a practice, you know? Uh, throughout di different, um, we have a different community within the Nevada culture, right? The different culture has a, their one significant style of both. And based on that, their cleanliness, their, uh, their systematic systems, we call Manander, we call Ura, we got Gurju, we have a Shesho. There's a different caste system. They all have their one style style. Okay. So, but bottom line is especially how uh, how you uh, respect. Respect is, is the most important thing in Nepal. And like when we sit in a way, it has to be all this in the first. You don't, little kids do not go there. Oh, here, little kid or girls or little kids. The oldest, eldest person goes first, and then it started going. Okay. In a, India, in a, in a Uttarakhanda, I was doing a study, and Uttarakhanda they have about Dham. It's very similar to our our way, and I'm really trying to connect how it works. It works, but this, but our is very elaborate, you know, compared to theirs. But it's the same same system. Can we change? Okay, so Newa way look like this right here. Okay, so what I was talking about Newa way is elaborate meal, up to twenty five dishes. Okay, so how you prepare twenty five dishes? And people are like, oh, we well, you know, it's like, yeah, there is plenty of. But it all depends on the season. Also, you can go up to, you can go 15, you can go to 25, and I have seen Taurasi Bender. 80, but there's a whole other story about Taurasi Bender, okay? So, first of all, basically, this is the way system, how it goes like that. Round, the first budgie, the with the beaten rice. The, if you look at the bit, budgie, it's bitten rice, it's a dry rice. And uh, actually, who prepares the food, right? Uh, we call bhani dadu, chef. The bhani dadu is a very important part. That's where the word linguistic wise is very important. So they are the master of cooking food, right? Newa is perfectly has to be balanced flavor wise. That's the keys. Like today, I prepared a couple of dishes, and one has a black cardamom, another one has a green cardamom. I studied under five top honey, the Yawari chefs, and they don't talk to anybody. I don't know why I would bless the top. <laughs> I'm really, I'm, they, don't, they don't tell anybody. Thanks to Senor I mean, here is another master here. 
Uh, he introduced me a lot of people. All of you guys helped me through this whole process. Anyway, so uh, I was very fortunate that the, the flavor contract is very important part. That's what the in a French school do. So anyway, the body is a rice, uh, which is jam packed with a lot of nutrients. You we call gaubaji. You know gaubaji means and yogurt and uh, chura. Yogurt. We have a feed. Oh, you have to feed a gaubaji means. If you look at you early morning, if you look at nowadays, doctors are suggesting you know eat um, oatmeal and yogurt. Mm -hmm. That's what that is. Basically, if you eat beaten rice, chura and cow in the morning, you will be a healthy person. Okay? Yeah, that's it. You're gonna lose a cholesterol dramatically. There you go. Okay. So there, this is what I'm talking about. And soybeans, right? Reduce the disease. And ginger will help uh, to digestive system. Okay, wilted spinach. Do you know that wilted spinach is introduced in China by Nepali? Isn't that great? So emperor, our, uh, one of emperor from China, Nepal, in a, I think that's a little bit time, uh, I think, it's presented to spinach to the emperor Han dynasty. Uh, so that's how they got introduced. It's a proven that stuff. But anyway, spinach is a digestive purpose or any kind of greens. And after they the sequence, how we eat, we, we have it today, right? Won't I do? So we have a sequence. So that will give a really hybrid stuff. So it's kind of helpful for your system. For fermented sake, I wrote it down there. It's we call tuong. It's a more like a sake, right? Have you heard the cloudy milky sake? So basically it is, yeah, if you sake and the tuong is no different. It's the same thing. Same process, same. Only thing is uh, the way they have the bulletin rice is a little bit different. You know, you know when you make a tuong, they say make out of taichin sake. The third reason they say taichin means taichin. It came from China. Tai Chin. <laughs> they say Tai Chin. That came from China to the house. And that's how they fermented the process started from if the gluten is rice. It is sticky. So if it had more starch content, that's why it's tuong becomes really good. If you make it out of basmati rice, right, you don't get a good tuong. That's why. Okay. So that's why these are the few things. And it's a benefit for your health. Tuong, drinking tuong, a little bit of tuong, a cloudy tuong. Not purified tone. Cloudy tone, it helps actually your gut. So that's why in Nepal, where in, in Nepal we don't say, oh, uh, cola, right? Mm -hmm. Cola means, this is the word I'm talking about, it's very early breakfast. Early breakfast, you know what they drink? <laughs> Soda <Sort of> whiskey. <laughs> Yeah. Right? And then, uh, Ella, uh, and then uh, egg. So, egg. A egg neutralized the uh, ela. Yeah. The yogurt yolk is fat, so fat will contain it. Neutralizes the ela, so you have energy and you go to work. <laughs> they say how our system. We don't drink a cup of tea. Tea is actually causing your digestive problem. Unless you are drinking green tea or something like that. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, one thing about a city, why we see, okay, this is the few things I just wanted to give you guys this. Digestive system is a, another thing is, Tia said, right, uh, sitting down all the time. It's like sitting down is good, right? For not long, but it helps to for digestion so you don't eat a lot of food, okay? So that's why you don't eat a lot of food. And so, and comfort actually is a comfort food. This is the comfort food, right? And you have a more flexibility. When you sit down and versus yeah. sitting in a chair is very different. Try experiment one someday. Eating same food, sitting on the floor versus that. And not the biggest thing is coming, bringing everybody together, bringing food, in, right? Food. Everybody brought us. today. Everybody came because of food, right? Yeah. 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 We are so happy, yeah. right? Food brings happiness, the smile, yeah. the 
We forget the moment of sad or any loneliness. This is the broad the happiness. Okay, let's not worry about that. You know that? Because I think a very important part. You know, this is a I'm making this talk up, and I designed it that painting, you know, as a drawing. Oh my god. Okay, here you go. That's a bubble. What a bubble we eating. <laughs> okay, there's a Murray, and in the end, we have a candle to give some sort of sweet to finish it up, okay? So everybody, uh, Lakumari, yeah, we are the master of Lakumari. Oh. Yeah. Anyway, go ahead. One. So anyway, so thank you for a uh, really short presentation. And uh, my, go ahead. my book is coming out in a couple of months. Uh, that's my book. I just want to share with you guys. Just want to show you guys. This is why we are getting together a together all this. We need to talk about the husband, the food, and everything. So now, next one will be the some kind of a surprise. What is that surprise? Is I think I already mentioned earlier. Okay, so you are going to have a chicken, all the people who are dancing with the chicken, that's a surprise. You will go there and do something, you will go to this because it will be chicken more than that somehow. Thank <laughs> you. 
Some information regarding the Manjushri, we all know that who is Manjushri, right? Manjushri came from China to create the whole Kathmandu Valley or Nepal Valley because he had some sort of a spiritual power because of that spiritual power. So he could turn off the boards and then kind of like open the, the water from the lake. So it was in a Koda in nearby they were going to the party. So that's the area it was. So and then the water came went out and then it was established as a human settlement. So that's how it's like a month street. Please welcome Anastasia. Oh, uh -huh. 
So many states of literacy, so many states of almost everywhere we can see. So I think this Bihar is constructed after 500 years. Before the 500 years, it was started in Fishabah, that was in the channel. So that was the last one, and after that, this is the one. But not inside the ball, but outside the ball. So when I say Mahabihara, the Mahabihara has to be at some kind of a special location, and also there have to be some protecting deities around the Bihara. So that's why I'm not just going to like a you know, normal normal temple or something. So it has to be protected by all the protecting deities. So when it was established in 2009, the priest from the ball and also brother was together with the Buddha to establish this Bihara. So it's a foundation and also establishing all the four different. So northwest, when we stand right here, yeah. the front we see east and the west and the north, north and then south, and then in all corner. So four plus four to space, and then up and then down. That will be ten different directions. It's all established, all protected. Mm -hmm. So that means if you have a birthday, if you have something which special needs to do, it's a place to come over and then do it. So now moving into a different direction. So I have some poems to recite. So poems to recite, and then I have a request request from few people is going to when you said this is right. I believe let's see uh Kusmati, do you have something? Yes, yes, please. Okay. Let me let's hear from Kusmavati. She has a point to read out. And after that, I believe I also got the information from oh. Gina, right? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Honey, <laughs> Uh, I write down a small poem about the wine because we divide it in our way, right? Ela luo mamedu thala, Ela luo mamedu thala, Matita ela patia disa, Ela luo mamedu thala, Matita ela patia disa. Waso Patia Tona Disan Yoko Toniko Dusa Ela Washamu Biko Kot Ba Sita Disan Yoko Toniko Dusa Ela Washamu Biko Taka Sita Disan We were so long Biki Bale Zigu Ela Bigu Ela जी नेवानी पिनिबु बिस्को या संस्कार नकासी का दिसम फे वो सब बीबले लिगु एला जी नेवानी पिनिबु बिस्को या संस्कार नकासी का दिसम अरे अरे आवया एला पासपी मुना नीपुगु तोसा ख आवया एला पासपी मुना नीपुगु नीपुगु तोसा ख अधे अधे एरा यको यको भाभी मकी का तोलसा सत्रु और रोग बैडी 
the lady who is coming to serve the wine is saying about the importance of wine consuming. Wine is medicine if you are consuming a limit amount and it becomes slow poison if you go beyond the limitation. It is true. That means it will increase your health problems, enemies, and social problems. If you if somebody drinks wine beyond the limitations, then he or she starts to speak truth. Even though we are consuming the wine. <laughs> Last but not least, wine serving in peace, birthday, marriage ceremony, farewell, good luck is the Newa people's tradition. Thank you. <laughs> We are going to recite our poem also. Let's see how kind of what kind of poem she brought. So now we know what's the importance of Ella, right? <laughs> Ella Luoya is the one of the song that just recently released. So popular. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Doctor Engineer, a singer, Chaya dancer, the skin people, the writer. The good rules that are designed, the teacher on the Priasma, Edith Beach Home, Bunsu Pisa, without Chima and Abidum. singer and sorry dancers and the dancer writers and all doctors and the engineers so i received only my small step uh, to recite the poem and so if there is any um, mistakes please forgive me um, the title of my poem is uh, first of all, I will recite in a parliament. Jiu Chila Kaya Nasa Mamha Gita Jibudesa Tastonya Gita Jibudesa Tastonya Jibu Parampara was Sanskriti Janinaya. Jibu Parampara was Sanskrit, Janinaya. Jita Jibu Mab had Tuskonyo. But he did a man Tuskonyo. Ati Jibu Mab, Mano Jita Tuskonyo. Monahela Kau, who came to Kay Boribu. Monahela Kau, who came to Kay Boribu. Wait the tea, Tuskon does not have a boo. Wait the tea, Tuskon does not have a Ale. Thaw gu maam hai, 
دبلین دبلین لو مینو ما لسون کله دستون یا لوگو پوستایا دا ها بو بھے ما بھے شینی بو پوتا دستون یا ہنی نیسین ما بھے سے کی بو پوتا یا نو چھبو لوگو پلا یا کنو بھکے نو چھبو لوگو پلا یا کنو بھکے نو मा भाई है जीवो परिचान ना खो मा भाई जीवो संस्कृतियाँ चीनों खो मा भाई माकते वो जीवो हीन करते भी ना खो मनो ये ला खो उन्हें उन्हें वही वो वही तो ची दस्तों दस्तों थाके वो अले खो वो मा भाई गुमे गुमे लो मनी वो जी तो जीवो मा भाजों पलाय दस्तों यो मनी लाखों उठें उठें बोई दो बोई तो ची दस्तों दस्तों थाके दो अली ची वो माँ है दुबले दुबले वो मनी दो सुबह तो नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू आई एम गोइंग टू ट्रांसलेट दिस पोम द टाइटल ऑफ दिस पोम इज मॉडर्न टॉम I like my country very much. I like my culture and tradition even more. I like to speak mother tongue very much, just like I love my mother. I love my mother tongue. Mine is the one not always constant. It flies, wanders here and there. So forget sometimes my mother tongue. I love to speak in my mother tongue, like the efforts to teach. I like the efforts to teach mother tongue to younger generation. From today on, let's try to learn mother tongue. Let's teach mother tongue. Let's spread the value of mother tongue. Let's make the new step soon. Mother tongue is also our identity. Mother tongue is also symbol of culture and traditions. So to promote and preserve our mother tongue is also our esteemed duty. Thank you to all. <laughs> literature is so rich that we can go back to a couple of hundred years starting from that time. Now, the modernization time, so this is the modern time. Mm -hmm. The same way I was given uh, two stories to translate into you know, different languages, like in English also, and also review the few English, the English uh, you know, translation of Nepal you know, stories. So I kind of wrote, you know, published uh, just a few months ago. So this is how the diversity of we have. We have a story of dance, we have a modern song, we have a poem, we have a story, we have a novel, we have a drama, we have everything. What else you need? What else you're looking for? So now the only thing we don't have is food. The only thing we don't have is food on the top of our country. Yes. So we can, use, we can use the language for the scientific you know, research also. Mm -hmm. Just like we're talking about physics, mm -hmm. just like we're talking about biology, talking about all these things, the rich language is here. Mm -hmm. So now moving into a different direction now. So I would like to invite all of you for the bhajan. So in the speaker song, this is different than what we have to call this. So they are going to present us a couple of bhajan. So we have too much to go we have to behind with the timing. And then after that, the only one surprise for you guys. Surprise is always good. Okay. So please tell your name and also the what sign you want to talk about. Yeah. Okay.
Hello, everyone. I'm Joshua Prado, Charity Senior here at Mismandala Mahabharata in Fort and Baja. And we have Adam and Amina here uh, with me. Thank you both for coming to do this. Adam, Adam does a fantastic job and consistently comes and leads every Wednesday at the Mismandala Mahabharata Fort and Baja. We have Bajan Singh. And so Adam is doing a tremendous job practicing all the time <laughs> and uh, making sure everyone comes weekly. So, thank you so much. For that. So, tonight we're going to share two bhajans. One, the first one's a little shorter than the last one. And the first one we're going to sing is Sri Ratna Masika. Um, in general, this is about that, you know, if you want liberation from samsara, pray the three jewels, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha. Uh, this is something even uh, even Brahma, Vishnu, Maheshvara, they know that. Okay. <laughs> Dana <laughs> O Sam Sali, Guri Prani Pindu, Rukanda Pakedu, Tani Chini, Purukanda Ka, Samatri Shrihano Chonegu. O Sam Sali, Tari Chuin O Daya Sandesha Dara Jibu Gabuto, Sri Rana Tibu, Yuki at the Dai Show, she gave Manawa Tau, O Santari, Tarikunya, your son, Namka, Sri Ratnaya, Brahma, Vishnu, Maya, Pride, Sanga, Sanga, Siam, now, the day to Mana Bapi Nilamo, Sagasha Guru Juma. And then, the last one we're going to sing, it is a bit long, so don't get so choked up. Just do something this way. This one can be a bit long. Anicha La Mamke Guru. This is really, really great because I think, uh, you know, for us, uh, for us to be here in East Mandala Mahamahara, for us who are always practicing, you know, there's some, uh, there's some fantastic aspects, a part of the Newa culture that I love so much, is that every single thing one does or learns or participates in, I believe you really learn the right way to live with other people, how to live in community, how to, how to live a good life. And uh, this song is packed full of, those lessons, you know, especially from a Buddhist perspective, you know, there's so many uncertain things. If you're complaining about anger and hatred and uh, sadness, you know, um, meditation, follow the three jewels, listen to the words of the Buddha. There are lessons there to solve our problems. And so this is this is something I always think of and contemplate when we're singing this song and singing this bhajan. <laughs> Adi Chagut O Sam Sare Chone Mane Mane Sukabati Bhuvan Masaba Sauli Chone Baba Yadu Buddha Dave Rasa Mane Nadi Kushi Nayan Shamte Dinarata Wanigo Kalapashan Nadi Wadu Halachunachi Yamu 
The next one is kind of like a surprise, so I haven't talked about it before. And that is the last one. Before the before the uh, boy. Anybody can guess what's going to happen because I put it on the table over here. Who said that? Yeah. Oh my God! It's not for me. So, uh, if it's Madhya Pradesh, please. Yeah. <laughs> and Let's... somebody needs to take over the. Uh, Oh, this is it. Do you want the cover or the um? 
<laughs> we'd like to present this piece of gifts to uh, Thea and some of our and then uh, yes First of all, please open it up and show to everybody, and then I will talk about what it is about. So I I also like to invite all the Pujaris, the whole one. Mm. And then so to the audience because it is you no, know, you come forward, please. You will come forward. Pujaris? Yes, Pujari. Those who have done doing the Puja, Puja. So this is typically dedicated to you know the Pujari people who are dedicating their time. So and then Zaya, please you also come with me to join the thing. So please line up on the table. Yes. Please stay on right here. And next on the table. So, uh, for the book on the front side, I will have one. Please come forward. We need to have one because you can pick this one. <laughs> so, So, the name of this book I published, actually, I wrote, is called The Neurology Matters. Unfortunately, until five o'clock, I was supposed to get a package from Nepal and it didn't arrive. So, Power up with the you know function that I already dedicated, I already had a plan. It didn't come out, but I have this one for your you know for your vision to look at what is this all about. So that means also I would like to ask Dr. Robinman Shakya that he also wrote the introductory of this book. So would you like to say something about this book? What you have read before it's published? So then I will elaborate what is there. Please. And uh, the content is there too. Go ahead. Your content is there. I think uh, it will be good if I read the whole thing. <laughs> Summary. Diana <laughs> uh, has uh, written this book, uh, which is called Neurology Matters. And I am honored to write some words, introductory words for this book. My. I'm really honored. Mm -hmm. uh, Daya is a versatile personality who has had a significant triumph in his long career as a writer, editor, interpreter, linguist, business person, community leader, and most importantly, as a formidable leader of the World Neva Organization. One of the major accomplishments of Daya Saki in Portland, Oregon, was the publication of Newar Vigiano, a journal of Newar studies. Likewise, Daya was also editor of many other magazines published in Oregon in the past. I know him long before I moved to the United States in 2002. Daya Daya, who was the president of Eugene Kathmandu Institute Committee in Eugene, Oregon, 
came to Nepal in 1992, leading a big sister city delegation. I was the general secretary of Kathmandu Indian Sister City Committee, which was under the Kathmandu Metropolitan Institute. Our Sister City Committee in Kathmandu had hosted a reception in, a, in honor of the visiting Indian Sister City Committee at Hotel Yakimiti with a dinner and a cultural program. So let me say something about the book. The word neurology reminded me of my student years in the former Soviet Union. A number of the Russian Soviet scholars had undertaken works related to the study of Nepalese arts, culture, language, and literature. Many of the Russian Soviet scholars were recognized then as the Soviet Nepalogists during the period of the USSR. Ivan Minayev, who had visited Nepal in 1865-80 during the rule of hereditary Iran Prime Minister, had extensive published materials about Nepal, its art and culture in Jarist Russia. Minayev is considered to be the first Russian Nepalogist. So there is a ne Nepalology, and then there are Nepalologists in Nepal and also abroad. But nobody has endeavored to throw light on it. Kudos to Dai Dai for his attempt to bring in the theme of neurology to the light. Dai Dai's book literally must be the first one in the field of neurology. Being the first attempt in the field of neurology, the book is kind of a repository of everything from theater and analysis like globalization of the newer language, the social instincts like WNO yesterday, today, and tomorrow, to advocacy like unveiling a status of Chitta Tarasede, to off the track like uh, linking Nepal and Oregon, and so on. All his life, Daira has been a firm advocate for Newa cause and Newa awareness. And the present publication, Neurology Matters, is a testimony that they did what he believed in. In footsteps of the Neva movement in America, there are six to examine the historical details, the origin, the origin and emergence of Neva activity in the United States. Similarly, in his write up, Neva Identity, there they explained that Neva. Culture and new art traditions are major sources of cultural identity of Nepal. No doubt, the Dayadai's memoir, mem memoir, what they did in America, offers analysis of his multifaceted activities in Eugene and Portland, Oregon. In the article, do we really need to say Nevare? Dayadai emphasizes the need for promoting Neva awareness. It is Nepal Vasa, not Nevare is one of the prime concerns of Dai Dai's book. Dai, Dai Dai's book also gives a voice to the Neva people for the Neva autonomy. Going by his book, it looks like he wants to champion the cause of raising Neva awareness, Neva identity, and Neva values. Dai Dai has already published numerous books in different subjects, the present book of Dai Dai uh, offers a wide spectrum in terms of WNO activities, newer identity, linguistics, challenges of teaching, Sanskrit language, and many more. Based on personal and practical research during his more than four decades in Oregon, USA, Neurology Matter is a book which focuses on problems facing Neva people in Nepal and abroad. In short, <laughs> that 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 just looks back on more than forty-five years of his stay, study, works, and creativity in America. All the articles published in the book, to my reckoning, are presented in in an effective and extraordinary way. I think that that neurology matters is an unprecedented and unique book in this field. I also believe this book is a definitive landmark for new arts in Nepal, as well as for those of us living abroad. Thank you.
So this is a book. I unfortunately I did not get into this video, but if you reserve the date, the price for this book is 1995. And then those who are interested to get the copy of it, today's price is definitely not. You can write down the name. So it has, I have completed all the articles, whatever I have published, published until now. The oldest one from 1982. Actually, I was in Kalimpong at the garden. And then the recent one, just a few months ago. So all together, there are 45 articles, and then total pages are 445. So that's a big thing. So I have done a lot of work. Recently, in October 2023, I took a one month off from my work and then collected all the articles and put into digitalization and then send it to Nepal we want to publish. And they give me a print signal in January 2024, then yes, so that's why it came out. So why the name Nevarology, you will see in the content. So all together, I have included everything. So these are kind of like, I know, if anybody wants to take a look, please, Thank you so much for bringing this uh, there. <laughs> okay, so uh, now we we'll want to almost like the uh, end of the. <laughs> So thank you very much. This is the end of the today's program, and then move on to our uh, long waiting way. So we're gonna have to line up the two in the middle and one on the side, one on the side. So we will have to fit all together forty people in this line. So let's move together and do for. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.